Hello, so in this video what I want to do is demonstrate as best I can on camera, which is always a bit difficult, the differences between Gen 1, Gen 1 Plus, Gen 2, Gen 2 Plus and Gen 3 night vision. Now, it's definitely worth saying at the beginning, with all of these Gens and night vision, there's going to be massive differences in quality between different models of, you know, Gen 1 night vision, Gen 2 night vision, Gen 3 night vision. So you do have to bear this in mind because you're always going to get people in the comments saying yeah but why didn't you pick this Gen 1 or whatever to do. It's because these are the units I've currently got. Now all of these are my own units except the one on the right which I'm borrowing from Hype which is the Gen 3. Um, just because obviously Gen 3 is a bit out of my price range so it's very nice to, for him to let me borrow it to do a videos with it but you know. Um, you'll hopefully see in this video that if the camera shows it well, there isn't a massive difference between this particular Gen 2 Plus unit I've got and his Gen 3. Um, so anyway, what we'll go over is on the left at the top, I'll tell you what, I'll point all of these out so you can actually see, you know, people can't say, oh, but I didn't listen to what you said. Right, so this one is what's called a Cyclops or a Cyclops one. So this is a Soviet Gen 1 tube and I've got a big lens on the front to let in as much light as possible. Um, these originally were used of a very specific lens, but generally it's quite hard to get these as the original lens now because photographers buy them to take the lenses off. So this just has, if I remember right, called an M42 or an F42 mount, and that's basically like the Warsaw Pack sort of, almost like the Ghost camera thread, if you like. Um, so that's that. This is a Pulsar, which is a Pulsar Challenger, which is a Gen 1 Plus. So this is a lot more of a modern unit. It still uses an old Russian tube in there, weirdly enough but it's sort of, you know, a higher tier old Russian sort of Soviet tube um, with, you know, other good bits on it. So the Pulsar is a lot more lightweight. Um, then you've got the IM101, which is a British early Gen 2 night vision for like an early 1980s night vision. It's absolutely amazing. Um, in this video, hopefully you'll see it's leagues better than the Gen 1s. It's not as good as the Gen 2 Plus, obviously, but one of the reasons I think for that is it lets in so much light through a big objective lens. Um, it's also quite zoomed in, but this is sort of a really good night vision if you wanted to use one for stargazing, if you can get a hold of one. We've then got the Chinese NNVT tube in this, which is sort of a unit put together by Hype for me that I bought from him. And basically, a Gen 2 Plus is, you know, like how a Gen 1 Plus is better than a Gen 1, but not as good as a Gen 2 technically. A Gen 2 Plus is, again, it's high spec and the Gen 2 doesn't meet all the specs to become a Gen 3. And I've annoyingly forgotten the name of this one, but this is a Russian Gen 3 unit, but of the sort of previous lot or generation and the type they're using now. Um, so, bear that in mind, because while it's a Gen 3, it's definitely not going to be the most amazing Gen 3 in the world. Like, I'm sure the modern Russian ones are even better. You know, the French night vision is certainly better than that, from what I understand. And with the American PBS 14s, um, you know, they they may be better, they may not be. Um, there's, I've seen a lot of debate around that. Um, and one other thing I'm definitely going to show in this video as best I can. What we have here are two infrared torches. This one is in 850 nanometer, I believe. And this one is 940 nanometer. The reason being, I want to demonstrate that not all night vision sees across the infrared spectrum in the same way. Um, so that's one of the weird things I was saying in the previous video, that the PNV57A, despite being a Gen 0 unit, it does amplify light a bit, I found the PNV57A when I've been testing it in dark rooms. Um, I'm not going to show that in this video just because it's so clunky, it's really hard to film through. But that does amplify light, not to a Gen 1 standard, but it does amplify light. You can actually see better with the PV. PNV57A than you can with your eye, that did surprise me. But what that can see is a massive infrared range spectrum. So what that means is obviously the PNV57A, if I had that here, you could have a whole variety of IR torches in different wavelengths, and it sees 400 nanometer to, I think it's 1200 nanometer off the top of my head. And that's a massively high range, because a lot of these night visions, for example, might only see about sort of 800 to 900 nanometer. So the idea should be all the night vision should see this, but some of them might struggle to see this one, as in it will be a bit dimmer on some of them or just not visible at all. Um, so yeah, right, so we're just going to do it in order um, and I'm going to set the camera up as best I can in another room with the lights off. So what you're just going to see is basically each of the night visions turned on and then each of the night visions turned on with the IR illuminators in the different wavelengths. Um, with pretty much all the night visions, you're going to see perfectly when there's an IR illuminator on. 
because, you know, even if you're in a pitch black room, an IR illuminator acts like a torch. Now, I think this camera will see some of the IR spectrum. So, yeah, you can see that a bit on here. It's actually got quite a good IR filter on this camera because it's not blinding the camera. But this is visible to the eye as like a red glow, this one. Um, but you can't see, you know, anywhere near as bright as the beam is to night vision. And this one, which is in... If I just... Uh, it is on. That's the funny thing with this one. It's hard to tell if it's on or not. But this one is the 940. So you can actually see that better on the camera than you can with your eye. Because to me, this doesn't... It's hard to tell if this is on or not because you just see a very, very dull red glow coming off of the um, LED chip in there. So... There we go, so I'm going to start off, we'll do them in order, Gen 1, 1+, plus, 2, 2 plus, 3, um, and hopefully this will be a good video for demonstrating them, but as I said, you know, um, it's always a pain to film with cameras. I'll be, just so everybody knows, I'll be setting the camera, camera to sort of manual focus and manual exposure and everything like that, so it should make the results um, sort of more similar across the night visions, you know, so one of the units doesn't look better or worse than it actually is to a much bigger degree if the camera decides to dampen the brightness or something because it thinks it looks too bright. So anyway, we'll be doing the um, Cyclops first, then the Pulsar Challenger, then the IM-101, then the Chinese NNVT tube, and then the Russian one where I've sadly forgotten the name of it, but I'll put it in the description. Right, I'm going to attempt to show you this as best I can. So first, we have the um, Gen 1. Now, I'm going to be completely honest, even with my eyes, I can't really see through this at the moment. So let's turn on a illuminator. And that looks better. Right, there we go. Right, I don't think the camera is going to film through this very well. But what I can hopefully show you there is this Gen 1 sees an 850 nanometer fine. Um, even if I can't focus this, you should hopefully at least be able to see the level of light amplification. So that's not even shining, you know, on the light itself, that's just a bit of it reflecting off the wall. So, yeah, you can just about see there, I think, but obviously, that's what, you can only really see with this when the light's in the distance, but not shining directly on stuff. All right, there you can see the mannequin, so if I point that there, that's the mannequin with the East German mask on, can you see it? Let me just adjust the camera up ever so slightly, so you can see him a bit better. Right, there he is, so hopefully you can sort of see that. But again, you know, as I said, this is a basically a Gen 1. Um, you know, this is like the worst night vision you can really get that's actual night vision. Because as I said, Gen 0, a lot of people would say it's not night vision. But anyway, that's it with the 840, uh, or sorry, 850 nanometer. Let me now switch to the 940. Okay, and this is it with the 940. If I can get that, see that? So, as you can see, this one doesn't see the 940 very well um, at all. You know, it, it can see that there's IR light, but it can't really make it out very well. So there you go, that's this one. Um, I said, you know, not... Oh, there we go, that's it, more on the mannequin. But as you can see, not, um, not that impressive compared to the 850 nanometer with this particular Gen 1. Right, now for the Pulsar. Now, again, I can actually now with this one very vaguely see the outlines of things in the room with this, but I don't think it's really showing up at all to the camera. So what I'm going to do is first use the 840 nanometer again. So what we're going to do now is get this in front of the camera. And what you should hopefully see now is, yeah, you can see the mannequin pretty clearly there. It's actually a bit too bright. But that's the Gen 1 Plus Pulsar picking up... Um, 850 nanometer. So now let's switch to the 950 or 940, sorry. And as you can see, quite similar to the other Gen 1 unit, basically the same results that, you know, like the other Gen 1 tube, it basically can see some of the reflected light coming back off of things that are slightly reflective surfaces. Um, but otherwise, you know, not um there we go that's that's a bit better so it, it can see it it's actually definitely better than the other one was but um you know it it's not that sensitive to this wavelength at least you know it doesn't appear that bright does it even though that's shining directly 
at the um, mannequin, you know, and if this torch is zoomable, but um, again, you'll see with the Gen 2s it picks it up easy. Okay, now for a Gen 2. Okay, so this is the Gen 2 IM101, and it's much better to my eye, but you can see without an IR illuminator on now in this room, um, where obviously I can't see the back wall, it's too dark in here. But with the night vision, a Gen 2 unit should be able to basically see, if I can get that back in frame, you know, at least make out shapes pretty well without an illuminator in a pretty dark room. Um, so there's that. Now, if we go to both the flashlights again, first we'll do them in the same order. First the 840. Uh, as you can see, that's very bright. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll shine these for the better units because I don't want to risk damaging them. With the brighter IRs, I'm just going to shine them you know, in the room. Let me just focus this quickly, just to check this is in focus. Right, I've got this slightly better in focus now. Um, but again, you know, like I said, that that's, so that's it again with no IR illuminator on. It's very difficult, annoyingly, to hold these and film at the same time. I've got the camera on a tripod, but obviously the night visions aren't. So that's the IR. So anyway, you can see how bright that is. I'm not going to go over the top of that one. Now for the 940. And that's, although that's a bit dimmer to this one, that actually kind of works better because it doesn't over brighten it. So yeah, you can see the um, uniform there. Right, now to Gen 2 Plus. This is where it starts getting really exciting. Okay, so here we have a Gen 2 with no infrared illumination. Now, I think the camera's focusing differently to my eye with my glasses here, because this is a much better picture to um, my eye. But, yeah, it's, the camera doesn't really want to focus on the night vision, unfortunately, because that is in focus for the camera. I'm just going to get that again and double-check the focus. I have actually managed to defocus it a bit now. Right, that's that in focus. Right. That should be very much in focus now, if I can get it back over there. So yeah, the problem here is actually just the camera um, focusing on it. But basically, to my eye, this is perfect. Um, you know, you don't need better than this Gen 2. Um, the light you can see there is, I think, a tiny bit of light coming through a crack in the curtain somewhere, and then shining onto that wall, because the curtains are actually there. So that's quite interesting because there's not an infrared illuminator on at the moment. Um, but obviously some of the surfaces in here are reflecting light off of them. Which you wouldn't really see with your you know, normal eye. But see if I just get that there. So again, this, this is kind of let down by the camera here. Even though I'm using a really good camera to show you this. Just because of the fact that, you know, as said... It, the camera doesn't really want to focus, and again, that's the camera at fault here, not the night vision. Because, you know, if I put this up to my eye, I can see very clearly. So, to give you an idea, with this Gen 2 Plus, I can see everything in the room. Some bits of the room are fuzzier, you get quite a bit of scintillation with this unit um, when it's this dark, but otherwise, you can see fine. So, the point is, maybe I can demonstrate that there, that although the camera doesn't want to play ball, you know, you can, um, tell you what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the camera back onto automatic just to see if it shows you this night vision as good as it should. Okay, so yeah, this, this works a lot better with the camera in this setting. So, you know, you didn't really miss out with the other night visions, because as I said, the, the first time you'd have seen anything, um, without an IR illuminator was with that IM101, and that was still very fuzzy without the illuminators. But as you can see there, um, now the camera is actually focusing properly through the night vision. Um, that should give you a really good example of what a Gen 2, um, Gen 2 Plus behaves like in a very dark room. So you can see the scintillation there, but the point is, yeah, you're never going to see that with your eye, are you? I can't see that mannequin back there. Um, so a camera, normal camera certainly can't, but yeah. The Gen 2 can see it pretty damn clearly. Sorry, the Gen 2 Plus. So the Gen 2 IM101 can basically make out the outline of the figure, but you can't see detail very well, it's very fuzzy. Um, this obviously has some fuzziness and scintillation, but overall, you know, you can look around the room and spot stuff. You can see there's a camo coat up there. You can see the East German sort of guy. You can see where there's a bit of light reflecting off of um, that picture there. So I'm going to be very careful with the IR lights now. So anyway, what I'm going to do is let's swivel this round to about here. 
Um, tell you what, let's let's just focus this one in on the storage boxes that are a bit closer up. Actually, no, they're plastic. They're going to reflect the light. I'm just trying to think if there's much here that I can shine where there won't be any light reflection because obviously the field of yawns is wide enough. Let's just focus on the camo coat. So anyway. First we'll do it again, the 850 nanometer, as you can see, shows up perfectly well. That's really clear as a day now, isn't it? With that, right, now for the 940. And as you can see, it can see the 940 just as well as it can see the 850. This is apparently an issue where some Gen 3s aren't as good at seeing the infrared range. So bear in mind, funnily enough, my Gen 0 is still the best device I've got for seeing the big infrared range. You can also see the bright source protection in um, action here. How it sort of fades the brightness down when it sort of gets a bit of light reflect back at it. Again, you don't want to test that on purpose with night vision, but it's a good feature to have on there to stop burning out the tubes. So yeah, there you go. That's that's the um, Gen 2. So again, with no IR illuminator, quite a lot of scintillation going on, but you can make out what you're looking at. With IR illuminators, you know, much easier. Right, now for the Gen 3. But with the Gen 3, I'm going to be very, very careful, because obviously, as it's not my night vision, um, basically, I'm going to have to, when I turn the IR on, I'm going to have to be very, very careful how I aim the sort of IR torches. I might just aim them at the floor. So you can only just see the IR bounce off the carpet. So that would look like that, basically. So as opposed to that, it'd be like that, um, which is probably the best I can do with the Gen 3, because obviously I want to be super careful with it. Okay, so now for the Gen 3 with no IR illumination. And if the camera wants to focus, you can see some of the marks on the tube there. They're not actually blems on there. That's, um, there you go, now it's focused. You can see there's no blems. What those are are the... Um, just I think there's a little bit of dirt on the lens, I'll give that another clean. But as you can see, a Gen 3 is pretty damn amazing, even this is a basic Gen 3. With no IR illumination, you know, in a very dark room, you can see how well it performs. Now, where the Gen 3 might not be as good is seeing different ranges of IR light and its bright source protection. Obviously, we are not going to test somebody else's night vision's bright source protection for obvious reasons. So... I'm going to have it aimed there, but I'm not going to aim the IRs there. So right, first the um, 850 nanometer IR aimed at the floor. Right, so you could see there that obviously it can definitely see reflections of IR literally off the carpet. So it's very sensitive to that wavelength. Right, let's flick that one off. Now let's try the 940. Oh, and this picks up the 940 pretty well. Um, yeah, so interestingly these Russian Gen 3 units have a better IR range than the American ones do. Because supposedly American Gen 3s have a lot of issue picking up um, 940 nanometer IR and above. So this Russian one seems alright, but yeah, I'll definitely give that lens a quick clean. I don't know which side the dirt's on, but I'll clean both sides regardless. But as you can see, so what this should actually teach you though is when we're seeing it in the dark, the resolution is definitely better on a Gen 3. I've got the IR lights off again now. So... It's quite hard to get this completely in the camera's frame of view, obviously. But yeah, it, so if we have that there, look, what you should hopefully be able to see is that a Gen 3 is far, far better when it comes to resolution than a Gen 2 Plus, um, actual passive light amplification and things like that. This one is actually quite good on the IR spectrum, but some aren't. With some Gen 3s, you're basically sacrificing even less, you know, IR range for better illumination. Um, and, you know, like I said, the thing I found from using this one out and about, testing it, is while it has bright source protection, it's nowhere near as good at auto dimming to a good level like the Gen 2 Plus. So what I found is, you know, if you're walking down a road, let's say, and there were occasionally like little street lights that weren't that bright or traffic lights, the Gen 2 Plus that I have would be perfect for that. This would struggle because it would even make everything too bright or too dark. Uh, to compensate but as you can see this um this gen 3 is pretty damn good so yeah they were in order of how good they were um that was done on purpose but yeah this but hopefully this has shown you that you know gen 2 plus and gen 3 especially on certain units aren't going to be the biggest differences in the world especially when it comes to you know how much you're paying for them because bear in mind that some gen 3 units cost you know several thousand pounds or dollars more than the gen 2 plus I personally would never spend that on one because, you know, to me, I could not justify that slight increase in performance. You know, and obviously, bear in mind, there are better Gen 3 units than this one. I suppose some Gen 3 units are probably Gen 3 Plus compared to this. 
but the point is that you know um, hopefully this has shown you that you know once you get into Gen 2 like I'd say in a room this dark you need almost Gen 2 at a minimum because my Gen 1 Plus Pulsar um, like so the Gen 1 Cyclops is pretty much useless in here the Gen 2 um, Gen 1 Plus um, Pulsar, um, Pulsar Challenger that could see where outlines were to the eye, but that was about it. So you could, you know, avoid bumping into things, but in this darkness, it wasn't really good enough. The Gen 2, so when we get to the IM101, you can see the room with that, but the problem is lots of things, you know, you can't make out very good details, and it's very, very fuzzy due to scintillation. Um, the Gen 2 Plus is absolutely fine, and the Gen 3 is absolutely fine. When I've been out and about, generally, even on a cloudy, overcast night where you can't see the moon or the stars, there's still enough light when I've been out like that to see fine with the Gen 2 Plus. They actually see better than in here. Because believe it or not, this is darker in here than it normally is outside. There's a little bit of light coming from behind me, and that's it. Um, and some coming from some t pulled curtains. But yeah, hopefully that's uh, giving you a good demonstration of Gen 1 to 3 through night vision.